Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome to the ninth in my series of me documenting my ownership of my 1997-993 Carrera S. Today the video is going to be discussing the whole car so we're going to walk around the car and I'm going to detail um, the differences between my 993 and stock 993s and just bring to your attention as an overall assessment and overall summary of the 993 and its benefits and some of its deficits if they exist. So excuse the sunglasses, we're having an incredible heat wave here in the UK at the moment, circa 30 degrees. It looks like we're just about to fall foul of the thunderstorms though, so if you take a look up. So let's hope we can get this video done before the rain hits us. So this is my 993S. The obvious change is that you'll notice that are wheels. We've already discussed about the wheels and first of all, this being the ninth in the series, check below for all the links to all the other videos in this series. And also please subscribe and please hit the notifications so that you'll receive notifications for all future videos in this series and all my future videos. This will very much assist the channel in moving forward. So thank you very much. And, and for my loyal viewers, thank you very much for staying with me and for staying subscribed and, and for being loyal to the channel. So this is my 993S. The first obvious enhancements on this car, as I've previously detailed below in the video for the wheels, is the actual PBS LM wheels which are reversed. This car was delivered with the hollow turbo wheels which were a substantial high cost option when the car was purchased from, from Scotland in the very beginning. And I have those wheels still uh, stored away in the garage and they've been refurbished as well so they're immaculate but they're, they're a high cost option and they're hollow because they reduce the rolling mass of the actual car. You can get very similar turbo twist wheels but they're actually solid and the way you can tell the difference is that the solid wheels have a little cut edge behind this section obviously I'm showing you on BBS LMs but if, if, you, if this was turbo twist then behind the actual spokes of the turbo twist there's a cutaway in the solid spokes and that's how you can tell whether they're solid or hollow the hollow ones do not have that cutaway the car has the clear side painters they're normally amber um, I change those over to clear it's usually amber or clear and um, that's usually fitted to these cars especially black cars this is metallic black which again is a rare option on this car uh, I feel that the, the clear side repeaters work a lot better. You can see it does actually have an amber bowl within the actual side repeater which provides the, the legal requirement for an actual amber light to be delivered when you put the indicators on. Moving around to the side of the car, the 993 has this teardrop side mirrors, has the teardrop wing mirrors. They're not actually wing mirrors in this case, obviously fitted to the door, but the teardrop mirrors. The 964 had the square, it's quite common for the 964 to be fitted with these teardrop editions look a lot younger and it is just a lot more aesthetically pleasing. We have the standard sound which has been much talked about and I'll just show you again so no other car sounds like this when you close the door. That's very unique to the old air-cooled style 911s. Also if we look in this wheel you can see that it's got the RS brake calipers and obviously RS discs. This is an upgrade that's been added to this car, a substantial cost option. It provides two things, obviously advanced braking and an enhanced aesthetic with regards to the large red calipers showing through the wheel. What a lot of people don't realise is that the RS calipers are different to the turbo reds. The turbo reds have certain size four pots, the actual items, the pistons that push out the, the pads onto the actual discs, onto the rotors. They are larger on the RS. Moving to the side of the car, you can see that it's got smoked indicator lens. Now this isn't standard, this is an extra. Inside there is actually an orange bulb which provides the legal requirement to actually have an amber indicator light. I'm thinking of reverting that back to the actual amber lenses. I'm not sure yet whether or not I'll do that. Moving further around, you'll see that with regards to the cooling slats or the grill, it's the split grille because it's a Carrera S that's unique to the Carrera S. It's only the Carrera S 993 that has this unique split grille. What a lot of people don't do for this split grille as well is you have to have, as I've spoken before in my earlier videos, you have to have a strengthener rod fitted across this section inside so that it provides additional strength because the actual strength of the, of the continuous grille isn't there anymore because of it being separated down the middle. 
Now, what I did differently um, with this car is I had the grill, the two split grills, painted separately in what's called Style Growl. It's the same colour as used on the Vesuvius Special Edition 993 S's, and I felt that that tied in very well and does tie in very well with the Carrera S badge, so I made sure that the Carrera S badge and the grey grill are tied in together. With the black, it looks very well and matches up and aligns the colours very well and makes it very distinctive against the metallic black and has a great aesthetic appeal when you look at the car from the rear. Moving down to the exhaust tip, these are actually what's called the wide oval exhaust tips. These are non-standard, but they are OEM. So you can purchase these as a separate item. These wide oval exhaust tips, again, provide a very aesthetically pleasing look to the rear of the car and is a quite common upgrade that people apply. Also, with regards to the door handles, I've put in the key lock retainers. These protect the key locks from any dirt. The locks are really very rarely used. In fact, I never use them. I always use the electronic key fob, which is on the key ring. To lock and unlock the car that prevents any ingress of dirt and moisture into the locks we ran to the side of the car underneath the car we have a protective bar now this bar is from carnival and it's common practice to put this on underneath the car standard that a chin spoiler is placed here but that chin spoiler is very flimsy and commonly gets damaged when the car um, hits anything that's elevated in any way in any curbs so these chin bars actually replace the chin spoiler also as we've discussed earlier i had a whole video uh, to cover off the topic but the car is protected the car has been detailed and protected in sante culture ppf with a hydrophobic coating that's protecting it against uh, small rock damage um, stone chips and of course sealing out the paintwork so once the paintwork's detailed the paintwork's sealed now until that ppf is taken off um, but that is protecting the paint so whenever i wash the car i'm never actually touching the paintwork which means I can never scratch the paintwork. Um, I'm only scratching the film and the film also is self-healing. So uh, if you actually put some fine marks into the film, it self-heals. Moving to the interior of the car, again, as stated in an earlier video, this has got the FD Motorsport short shift gear lever and connection to the selector shafts in the gearbox. So it's a lot more direct. So a lot faster gear changes and a lot more of a direct feeling and feels a lot better to be honest. So it's, and it's aesthetically pleasing as well, depending on whether or not you like this design. I've got the original S gear lever in case that's ever required again. Also with regards to the interior, in an earlier video you may have seen some aluminium accents across the air conditioning controls and on the actual petrol pull knob, which is in the corner. I've removed those now those were just replacements I had the original so I've actually put it back to standard because I think that's more in fitting with the FD Motorsport gear lever and how the interior is now I also had an aluminium accented handbrake cover I've now replaced that back with the original as well so it's back to standard and I think it does actually look better I know I had some complaints from some people that the car looked fantastic apart from the aluminium accents I put inside the car so I decided to remove them and I think they're right actually it does look better but those aluminium accents have been on for years it shows a little bit of a change for me anyway for the interior but of course it's removed it's taken it back to standard again this car has the Hamilton and Palmer alarm and immobilizer system the Hamilton and Palmer alarm was installed to 993s of this era era um, but perceivably to 964s as well the standard Porsche alarm that was fitted to the 993s wasn't to Thatcham standard to be able to bring it up to Thatcham standard when the car was delivered to the UK third party alarm that was accredited to Thatcham standard was fitted by Hamilton and Palmer so Hamilton Palmer in effect got the contract to fit all alarms to the 993s in the UK this is a byproduct of that alarm so you have this additional LED light that flickers in the center console and it shows status of obviously whether or not the alarm is installed. The alarm isn't fitted at the moment and if the alarm is triggered for some reason the flashes on this LED denotes the type of trigger that affected the alarm. So you can tell for example whether or not the bonnet was breached or the rear engine cover or the doors. In addition, you also have these items here, which I've talked about earlier. These are linked into the alarm and these are ultrasonic sensors. So they sense internal activity. If you press the buttons on the alarm in a certain configuration when you set the alarm, you can switch these internal ultrasonics off, uh, which I always do because I leave the windows open to let the interior breathe uh, when the car's in the garage. And particularly when the car's stored for extensive periods of times, the last thing you want to do is have the alarm keep being triggered. I also have the car on a standard CTEC battery conditioner as well so that the battery doesn't depreciate over the times it's stored. Again, this is a garage queen, so it's rarely driven circa 200 to 400 miles a year. It's therefore quite commonly it's in the garage on a CTEC battery conditioner. One of the additional items that I installed to my car 
is the pad keeper. What this does is it actually lifts up and makes a clean fitment of the firewall pad. So this is fitted over and installed over the firewall pad and makes a very clean edge. Um, which makes it a lot more again aesthetically pleasing so if you look at the engine you'll see if you come down and look at the engine you see a clean line across the top of the engine this car is 22 years old but these cars run from uh, circa 1995 to 1998 although as I said earlier in one of my other videos uh, the actual models the last models were actually built in 1997 some of them were registered late in 1998 if you look at the engine compartment as a whole you'll see it's a lot cleaner line with the pad keeper now that pad keeper came from America there's different versions of system that puts a clean line on the pad but the best version is the version called the pad keeper which is imported from America there's various different types of exhaust you can have fitted to these cars the version I went for is from Carnival called RSRs in effect most of the different versions of um, changes to the exhaust to provide a sport sound to the exhaust system entails cutting open uh, the silencers and taking out some of the baffles or changing the configuration of the baffles so you have more of a direct sound through the system so less in effect less sound baffling um, so these versions of exhaust that i had fitted to this car are called rsrs in effect you take your silencers or you send your silencers to Carnival and then Carnival already have the same versions of those silencers that have been doctored and they're sent back to you and so it's a direct exchange. I'll just start the car so you can hear the exhaust. give a lot more aesthetically pleasing burble when the car is just ticking over and of course you get that rasp and pop back when you accelerate and when you rev the car uh, which is a lot deeper and a lot more pleasant sound you can get a lot different version of of these types of modifications done to the exhaust silencers a very common one are Fister stage one two and threes but uh, I didn't know of those at the time and I do prefer the RSRs. So that's the end of the walk round of my 993. Again showing you characteristics of my particular 993 and some enhancements that pre-exist in the 993 as well. Okay guys, so thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next video.